L3, L4, L5, right? Okay. Um, what? Okay, give me a second. Um, Ryan, do this. Hit second. Then number two. Then press number. Wait, no. That's not what I want. Hold on. There you go. No, it doesn't. As long as you know where you're putting it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Right on. Hit stat. Number five. What oh, one? That's a little bit stat. Hit stat five. And then we have it. Now you're going to have L. What is it say? Okay, now you have L. 1, 2, 3, 4, I think. Okay, Lucia, you have your help. So you guys have that in there? You have No, so here's what you guys probably have going on, unless you've seen it already. You have L1 and L2 being graphed. So, if you go to second stat plot, you can turn off L1 and L2 by simply for plot one, don't delete, for plot one, hit enter, and then where it says X list and Y list, change that to L3 and L4. So you have things in three and four. So now go to second stat plot. Second, there you go. And now hit enter. There's plot one. And then go down and change that to L3 and L4. So you scroll up till L1 is highlighted. And now second number three is L3. And then go down to the, the one below that change that to L4. There you go. Now, change your window. Don't forget to change your window to fit these numbers. Okay, so you can just hit second, and then that's L3. So the, there's a second function for the blue. Anything that's, at, anything that's blue above your keys is a second function. So L3 is second function and then the digit 3. No, 
If L3 is your X, yeah. where would be a good place to start? What would be a good minimum? Zero. And a maximum? 12. 12 or 15. If you do 12, your this point is going to be on the edge of your window. So it's up to you. And then here, I would, I don't know, go, go from 0 to 65 or 75. In fact, you can go from 0 to 100 and go from 0 to 15. That's fine. You can overshoot a little. What about the what? Oh, that's your scale. That's your tick marks. How far do you want them apart? So if you're going to go, you know, picture this. If you were going to be making a graph, and here this graph is, if you're going to go from zero, let's say you, you said 15 is going to be the boundary over here. Do you want 15 tick marks in there? If you did, it's going to get pretty crowded on that little screen. So maybe you count by threes or fives. If you count by fives, your X SCL would be set at five. And then you would have something similar to this. Likewise with your vertical. If you went from zero to, let's say, 75, you don't want 75 tick marks. It just looked like one big blur. So maybe you'll do, I don't know, 25s. If you did that, I mean, that's pretty spread out, but you, you know, you're limited on your window size. Because they're, they're just not huge screens to look at. But that's why the trace function is so sweet. No, you can just change. You can just change this. Go down to plot three. That's the one you're working with. Hit enter, and then change. Scroll down, and then when that's highlighted, make it L three and L four. It's a second, the second function. Yeah. Okay, so go down to number three. Hit enter. And now go down to the L1 and change it to L3. Second, go down. Second, L3. Go up, you're going past it. Stop. Second, L3. Second. The blue, little blue. There you go. And then change the next one to L4. There you go. 
now when you change your window on your graph, you'll be able to see those new points. I have a question. Are you okay? Yeah. You still have that line in there, don't you? Wait, how do we exit out of the plot? You can use the delete method, or you can turn it off easily. Yeah. Yeah. change your minimum and maximum. Yeah, it looks like it worked. Well, I mean, how about it was in the Okay, did you change your window? Wait, hold on. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Just a second foot. Second, I'm going right next to it. Second mode. Just click. Okay. Down. So you got everything in L1 and L2? Yeah. So do you have your window beside you want it? Assuming you're there. Okay. Uh, 26 was a question from homework. What else is a question from homework? Three? Number three, number 26. I say seven. Three and seven is 26. Okay, then three and 26. Never mind. All right. I will talk three, and you can always ask more. So question number 10C. So question number three, we want to use the table and the scatter plot and the activity to predict a head size. So when they say two months old, that can be a challenge because we only have data from zero and three, right? Yes? So um, let's just use this here. What was the head size at age zero? 
What was the head size at age zero? Come on, there's like 18 or 20 of you in here. 35. 35? 0.8. So let's just say that's about 35.8. Okay, then at age three, what was the head size? 41.3. 41.3. So that's going to be roughly here. How about at age six? 43.7. So let's. Okay, so here's what we have. We have these three points, and we want to know what month two is. What would be a reasonable guess as to where the head is at if this is at zero and that's three months? 37. 37. 38. Maybe 40. But, but, no, but not higher than 41 and not less than 35. This is question number three. Isn't that question three? Yeah. Use the table and the scatter plot from the activity test to make Trace's head circumference when she is. Two months. So two is, you know, two-thirds of the way. So I'd say it's, you know, if you just said 38 or 39 or 40, that'd be great. We can figure it out exactly, but that's beyond our toolbox right now. There probably is a line in here, but knowing exactly what that line is, that comes later. 17 months. So if you look at 17 months, I think you've got to come all the way out here to 15 and 18. And 17 is like here. So what was the head size at 15 months? Sorry? 47.2, thank you. And at 18 months, it's approximately? 47.7. Oh, 47.7. So what do you think it was at 17 months? 47.5. Yeah, maybe 47.4 or 47.5. Yeah. But if you look at the shape of the graph, it kind of flattens out, doesn't it? So it doesn't increase as fast as babies get older. You know, who's got a, a little sibling around the house, like age two or three? Have them, have them touch their hands above their head sometime. I mean, you do it. Do it. Look around the room. You fit a whole another head or two in there, right? Have a two-year-old do it. It's hilarious the first time you see it. They can barely reach and touch their, their hands together because their head's so big compared to the rest of their body. So in that, if you look at this, the head slows in its circumference growth. The, all of the growth happens in the first two years. So little, little kids have big heads compared to the rest of their body. So like your head just doesn't grow? Not as much, no, because the brain fills in real quick and needs space. Yeah, and then we have all this time to fill the brain, but the brain itself occupies a lot of space early in age. And that's the way most mammals are. Most mammals are that way. What about that? No. The brain just isn't that significant. Small part of the brain, really. That is, you know, they're, they don't do a lot of thinking. We do. So the cerebral hemispheres occupy a lot of space in the mammalian brain, particularly in primates. But reptiles, their cerebral hemispheres are tiny. They really don't use them much. And that's where, you know, all of our thinking and processing takes place, what we're doing right now. So then, number 10C, identify the quadrant for each point not mentioned in parts A and B. Okay, so which of the points from question 9 are on the x-axis? So I gave you question 9, right, and you had to graph those points? 
Yep. Did you do it on the graphing calculator or you do it on paper? <coughs> Well, not obviously. Oh. That's why I'm asking. Unobviously. So, if you have 9, negative 4, that's in this quadrant. What quadrant is that? Four. That's 4. And if you have 0, 8, which quadrant? 0, 8. If that's 8, this point is 0, 8 up here. It's neither. It's on the y-axis. Yeah, so we just say that's on the y-axis. And then if I had 0, 0, that's in no quadrants because that is the origin. Yes? Uh, so I'll kind of confuse if the origin... Uh, included with the y and the x-axis? It's, yeah, it, it's, it's the intersection of both the x and the y-axis. So we just call it the origin. So but it's on the, yeah, the origin is on the x-axis, and the origin is also on the y-axis. So letter D, negative 3, 0, is somewhere out here. So let's see, what do we have? We have 9 and then negative 4. That was down here. So negative 3, 0 is on the x-axis. And negative 4, negative 2 is in which quadrant? The third. And then we're left with 6, 8. 6, 8. Which quadrant is that? The first. So that's the second. So when the question says, which of the points from question 9 are on the x-axis, looks like there's two of them, the origin and negative 3, 0. And which are on the y-axis, the origin, and 0, 8. Question or stretch? Stretch Okay. Dun, 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 dun. The average height... Oh, all you need is to get on the internet. Find the average high of your hometown for each month. Put the data into a table and then create a scatter plot. Who found the numbers? And you may not have found the same numbers, because if you go out there, there's different sites. Like there's one site that says we get 121 inches of snow a year. There's another site that says we get 200 inches of snow a year. I don't know. It's not so much which is more accurate, it's which is more official. And the official is supposedly at the airport. That's how it is, like in Juneau, too, or any other city. There's an official weather station for a particular community. But that doesn't mean that it's right or it's wrong. It just is for that location. And we got here, it varies so much where you live, how much rain, how much snow you get. So what did you get for January? Somebody have some information for me? 29.8. What do you have for February? 33.5. 39. What about April? 48.8. So there's just a sample. Did some of you find numbers different than this? Yeah. Did you write down your sources? Yeah. When you Google, it's what pops up, huh? Yes, okay. Yeah, um, I think if you can go to something that has this in it, it's going to be more official. That data is that data is really hard to find. I don't know. Their website's not the greatest in the world, but that's the more official stuff. National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. NOAA. They're the they're the they're the ones that keep the most official statistics. So then you just had to put that onto a graph. Yeah. So, so question-wise for 26, is the question finding the data or how to put it onto a graph? Right. Both? 
So, for this question, was your question how to find the data or how to put it onto a graph? Somebody asked me this question. No, nobody wants to say anything. Yes, it's both. Because it says put it, find the average price on Okay. So finding it, you just got to Google Angel, Alaska, monthly high temperature. And then if you make a table, just make a T table like this where you would write the month and then the temperature. And then if you put it onto a graph, when you put horizontally the month, and then this is going to be temperature average high temperature. And then, would you make it a scatter plot or a line graph? Yeah, scatter plot, because you're looking at monthly. If you had more data, and you were doing one day after another, then it might make sense to connect the lines. But, if, if you're saying, this is January, and then the next mark is February and such. It's not like in the middle is halfway between January and February. Because this is the average over the entire month, not the beginning of the month. And then as you move to the right, you progress through the month. So either a bar graph or a scattered plot would be appropriate for this. I mostly just wanted you to get to see what the average high temperatures are here. Holy fuckers. Look at that. This was your book. Good that we got this. It's a mess. So, more questions. Uh, six. Sure, six. In 1991, the White Sox moved into a new stadium. Do the data in the table indicate any change in attendance in 1991? What was the attendance in 91? 36,000. In the year, be well, 10 years before, the average attendance was about 17 or 18,000. Does it look like the attendance changed in 91? Yeah. yeah. Why then? Why do you think? What would be the reason, teacher? Um, either more seats or demographics. More seats or demographics? What do you think? We just got like, the new continuous more seats in more area. More seats in more area. What do you think? More people in the area? This is Chicago. Population's been going down for the last hundred years, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was more people in that area. What do you think? Um, Could you say that again? Easier to get to the new stadium? Speaking from experience, it's because it was a new stadium. It's like, cool. When they built Miller Park about the same time, which is where the Brewers play, now they don't call it Miller Park anymore because they sold the naming rights. What's that? No, they just, they just sold, this year they sold it to um, American Family Insurance. It's a big insurance company in Madison, Wisconsin. And they just sold the naming rights. So next year it's going to be called American Family Insurance Park. It's still Miller <laughs> Park. Anyway, when they opened Miller Park, it was the first roof that has sections that open up like a big, huge fan so they could close it up and they could open it up. And it was really, really, really cool. To say the least, it was cool. Because this is a cold place. Milwaukee's real cold. In spring baseball, I remember sitting out there in the rain and 35 degrees watching baseball on opening day one year against the White Sox. And it was miserable. So they go and they create this new park with a roof and a wall and it's 72 degrees inside and it's practically snowing outside and people are sitting around in t-shirts watching baseball. It was the greatest thing in the world. The first time we went to Miller Park, we walked out with the kids and we got to the car, we all looked at each other and we said, let's come back tomorrow night. And that's what it was. It was new, it was cool, and it was fun. And it just 
fill the place. So I think that's why Kaminsky Park all of a sudden had so many people. Because then look at 10 years later, boom, back down. The thrill is over of the new park. So, any more questions? Okay, progress, they're not progress, the self-test is on page 64. The idea behind the self-test in these books is that if you can sit down and do that in 45 or 50 minutes, if you can do those questions in 45 or 50 minutes, you will have no problem sitting down and completing the test in 45 or 50 minutes. These are not the exact questions, but they cover all of the main concepts of the chapter. There's this one page. Yes, that one page. And what I'm assigning of that for you is not exactly the whole thing. Yeah, this is like a, oh wait, no, I am. I am doing every question for you guys. Except for number 22. So you, what I'm assigning here is 1 through 25, but skip 22, because that's a scientific notation thing. I'm not going to test you on scientific notation. What? Your math book. Oh, that goes in. So think of this as a homework assignment. So this is just like doing your homework. But this is what I'm treating as review for you. So many of these topics we've seen before. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing review work. This is it right here. Uh, today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is only 40 minutes in, in class. I will answer questions. We can discuss anything in the self-test. Then you guys have a three-day weekend. And I see you next week, Tuesday, for class. However, the first day of the week is not going to be a day that I will ever test you. So what we will do next Tuesday is move on to other work, and on Wednesday of next week, you will actually have the chapter one test. Okie dokie. Homework. Do this in the homework notebook. Can we use our notes? To do this work? Yeah, this is a homework assignment. On the test, can you use your notes? No. They just call it a self-test. It's just for you to go through all of the problem types that you will see as review. So it's like it's another name for review.